Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Ryzen X 3D chips are quite popular for gaming and the most popular ones seem to be the 7800X 3D and the 9800X 3D. So let's compare them. The Ryzen 7 7800X 3D was released in April of 2023. It has 8 cores and 16 threads, a base clock of 4.2 GHz, a maximum boost clock of 5 GHz and 96 MB of L3 cache. On the other hand, the 9800X 3D came out in November of 2024. It also has 8 cores and 16 threads and 96 MB of L3 cache. It has a slightly higher base clock of 4.7 GHz and a maximum boost clock of 5.2 GHz. Both CPUs have a TDP of 120 watts. These numbers don't mean much by themselves, so let's start testing. I have two systems and the specs are on the screen. I know that it would have been fairer if we just swapped the CPU and kept the rest of the components the same, but having two similar systems should be okay as well. Let's start with Cinebench 2024. In single core, the 7800X 3D gets 113 points, whereas the 9800X 3D gets 132. That's a 17% increase which is typical for a single generation leap. In multi-core, the 7800X 3D gets 1080 points, whereas the 9800X 3D gets 1335 points. That's a 24% increase which once again aligns with other Ryzen 9000 processors. Although both CPUs have the same TDP, the 9800X 3D runs a bit warmer. Under an all-core Cinebench load, the 7800X 3D hits a maximum of 79.4 degrees, whereas the 9800X 3D hits 83.8. While both values are below the TJ Maxx value, it just shows that you need to pick a decent cooler for your X3D processor. This isn't an apples to apples comparison though, since they have different AIOs installed. I then converted a 10 minute 4K 120fps video to a 4K 60fps video using Handbrake. This process took 19 minutes and 34 seconds on the 9800X 3D, whereas it took a whopping 28 minutes and 56 seconds on the 7800X 3D. I repeated this test multiple times, but the difference stayed. Therefore, the 9800X 3D ended up being around 48% faster than the 7800X 3D. Before we get to gaming, let's check out the export performance on Premiere Pro. I made a video last year about the Logitech G305 gaming mouse and I've been using that project to benchmark different systems. Paired with a Radeon RX 9070 XD, the 9800X 3D took 258 seconds to export the video, whereas the 7800X 3D took 266 seconds. That's a 3% difference, but your mileage may vary depending on the type of footage that you're working with. And with that, let's move on to gaming. Since we want to measure the CPU performance, we'll be doing most of our testing at 1080p low settings. And we'll start with Cyberpunk. In 1080p low with no ray tracing or FSR, the 7800X 3D averages 265 frames per second in the built-in benchmark, whereas the 9800X 3D does 283. And in regular gameplay, the 7800X 3D averages 207 FPS, whereas the 9800X 3D does 235. Therefore, the 9800X 3D performs around 6% better in the built-in benchmark and 13% better in my gameplay. And we see around a 20% bump in 1% lows. So with that, let's move on to CS2. At 1080p medium, the 7800X 3D averages 439 frames per second, whereas the 9800X 3D does 474. That's an 8% difference and the 1 and 0.1% lows also show a similar difference. CS2 in these settings rely heavily on the CPU and you can tell just by looking at the GPU usage. Anyways, with that, let's move on to Fortnite. In 1080p lowest settings, the 7800X 3D averages 385 frames per second, whereas the 9800X 3D does 393 frames per second. The difference is only 2% and the 1 and 0.1% lows are also quite similar to one another. 
Subjectively speaking, I haven't noticed any difference when gaming in 1080p. Regardless of whether you get the 7800X 3D or the 9800X 3D, there will be a significant performance increase compared to the non-X3D chips. In Fortnite, both X3D chips averaged around 30% higher than the 9900X. The difference is closer to 25% in CS2 and around 30% in Cyberpunk. Personally, I can't tell the difference between a 7800X3D and a 9800X3D, but I can tell the difference between an X3D processor and the 9900X for example. Obviously, at least for today's AAA games, you don't see a significant difference in higher resolutions or in cases where you're more GPU bound. Overall, I think it's safe to say that if you already have a Ryzen 7 7800X3D, you don't need to upgrade. I would normally say that if you don't already have a 7800X3D, you should go for the 9800X3D. However, it seems like there are some issues with the 9800X3D nowadays. There have been reports of 9800X3D processors prematurely failing, seemingly out of the blue. My CPU is fine so far, and I think this might be resolved with a BIOS update down the line, but this is still something to keep in mind. The cheapest 7800X3D that I can find today goes for 579 Canadian dollars. And the 9800X3D goes for 689. But if you're shopping the sales, you might find some CPU motherboard RAM combos at brick and mortar stores. And among those, I feel like the 7800X3D bundles are a better deal. Thank you so much for watching, please consider liking this video, checking out my other videos, and subscribing to my channel. Take care.